Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE biology lesson where you will learn absolutely everything you need to know on topic 9.2, the heart. As always, we'll be following the Cambridge syllabus exactly and we'll cover absolutely everything you need to know for your final exam. For topic 9.2, you need to identify the structures of the heart, understand how heart activity is monitored, investigate the effect of physical activity on heart rate and describe and state possible risk factors for coronary heart disease. For extended, you need to identify and explain the function of the heart valves and septum, explain the relative thickness of the heart chambers, and explain the effect of physical activity on heart rate. We'll begin with the main structures of the mammalian heart. The heart has four chambers divided by a muscular wall called the septum. They are the left and right atria and the left and right ventricles. To remember which side is which, imagine that it's your heart and that you're facing outwards from the screen. The chambers of the heart have muscular walls which contract, pumping the blood out of a given chamber and into the next part of the system. The walls of the atria contract first, sending the blood down into the ventricles, and then the ventricles contract, forcing the blood out of the heart in arteries. Remember that blood is carried away from the heart in arteries and returns in veins, and we'll cover the main blood vessels of the heart in topic 9.3. To ensure that blood doesn't move backwards into the chamber or blood vessel from which it came, one-way valves sit between the different structures. Valves are also present in the veins to prevent the backflow of low-pressure blood. Now, the role of the heart is to pump blood throughout the body, but the muscular substance of the heart itself, known as myocardium, needs a supply of blood too. This is delivered in coronary arteries, which form a network throughout the organ. Next, you need to know about monitoring the activity of the heart using heart sounds, ECG and pulse rate. To monitor the sounds of the heart, a stethoscope is used. The heart produces a regular lub-dub sound caused by the closing of the valves that separate the atria and ventricles, followed by those at the entrance to the arteries. The electrical activity of the heart can be monitored using an ECG or electrocardiogram. Electrodes are attached to the skin and heart rate can be viewed on a monitor in the form of a trace. Each time the heart beats, a pulse of high pressure blood moves through the arteries, which can be felt in the radial artery just above the thumb and the carotid artery in the neck. Heart rate can be measured by counting your pulse for 30 seconds and multiplying the number by 2, or counting for 15 seconds and multiplying by 4. To monitor the effects of physical activity, simply measure your pulse before and immediately after exercise, and then at 1 minute intervals after that. You'll notice heart rate increases significantly with exercise and gradually returns to a resting state when you stop. Next, you need to know about coronary heart disease, including possible risk factors and strategies for prevention. So coronary heart disease, or CHD, is caused by blockages in the coronary arteries that restrict blood flow to the myocardium. A fatty substance called atheroma, or plaque, builds up in the lining of the arteries, narrowing the lumen and restricting blood flow. As plaque continues to accumulate, the walls of the vessels may become damaged, increasing the likelihood of clot formation. Blood flow decreases and the myocardium is starved of of oxygen, which in extreme cases can cause the heart to stop beating. Possible risk factors for CHD include lifestyle factors like diet, stress, smoking and a lack of exercise, and those that you can't control like age, sex and genetics. So consuming more calories than you expend over time results in fat accumulation and eventually obesity, which puts more strain on the heart. In addition, excessive consumption of certain nutrients can cause inflammation in the arterial walls and the buildup of plaque. Statistically, regular smokers have a much higher chance of death due to CHD than those who don't smoke. Harmful chemicals in the smoke are thought to damage the lining of the arteries, increasing the risk of atheroma and clot formation. When we don't exercise enough, the heart muscle loses strength and tone and becomes less efficient at pumping blood. This means that the heart has to work harder to deliver the required volume, increasing the risk of suffering a heart attack. Genetics are also thought to play a role in that some people simply inherit a greater predisposition for the disease from their parents. Incidence of CHD increases with age and is more common in men than in women. Finally, stress increases blood pressure, which is a significant risk factor for heart disease. Okay, so that's everything you need to know for core, so we'll move on now to the extended section, beginning with some additional information on the structures of the heart. There are four valves in the heart that prevent the backflow of blood. Two atrioventricular valves sit between the atria and ventricles, and two semilunar valves can be found at the entrances to the major arteries. As the ventricles contract, blood pressure increases, causing the atrioventricular valves to close and the semilunar valves to open. As a result, blood moves from the ventricles and into the pulmonary artery and the aorta. 
When the ventricles relax, the semilunar valves close due to blood pressure in the arteries. This prevents blood from flowing backwards into the ventricles. Now the muscular walls of the ventricles are thicker and stronger than those of the atria, as they pump blood over much greater distances and therefore need to generate more pressure. The left ventricle delivers blood to all the major organs, so has a thicker wall than the right ventricle, which only pumps blood to the lungs and back. The septum divides the two sides of the heart. Its role is to prevent deoxygenated blood on the right side from mixing with oxygenated blood on the left. Finally, you need to explain the effect of physical activity on heart rate. So when you exercise, heart rate goes up to meet the increased demand for oxygen and glucose in the muscle cells. Oxygen and glucose are used to produce energy through aerobic respiration. So by speeding up their supply, the additional energy needed by the muscles can be produced. Well done, you've just covered absolutely everything you need to know on topic 9.2, the heart. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate your subscription and I'll see you next time for topic 9.3, blood vessels.